talk is going to really touch on a number of different topics here. Um, if you just look at the title, it's, it's about all optical modulation, so it's, it's really about light and it's about using light beams to control other light beams. But the other concept here is nanoscale optical circuits. So uh, part of the modulation that I'll be talking about is based upon making optical circuits at, s at small scales and these really uh, in effect mimic electrical circuits but operating at the frequency of light, so at very high frequency. The other concept is that of a metamaterial. This is an artificial material that we create that has properties that you wouldn't normally find in nature. And so all of these things get combined together to make something that modulates light. Now with an electrical system, electronics has been terribly successful. Virtually everything in this room has some sort of electronic component in it. And the reason why it's been so successful is that electrons strongly affect other electrons. The electric fields cause them to move around and you can change your voltages and potentials and so on. If you try to do the same with light, you find it's very difficult. Two light beams will just overlap and pass through each other um, unaffected. And so if you want to use light to modulate light, you have to do something um, a bit special. So with all optical modulation, the idea is really to um, control the intensity of light beam with another beam. So the, the concept is you have some sort of signal beam, which is represented there on your right, and then you, you shine some sort of control beam, which then changes the, the intensity or phase of that signal beam. The problem is, as I said, that light just passes through itself unaffected. Um, so it's very hard to get some, uh, a modulation effect. One way that people do it is they use a non-linear optical material. So you shine light on this non-linear material and it changes its refractive index and that modulates another light beam passing through it. But that effect isn't terribly strong. It's, it's, you need very intense light beams to cause that to happen. The other way that you can modulate light is by interference. If the two light beams intersect, where they intersect, you'll get constructive or destructive interference and that will change the intensity. But the problem is as soon as you take one light beam away, the other one just keeps propagating. Or if you, take the, the, if you take, leave the, the second one there and take the first one away, that just keeps propagating. So there's no distinct, distinction between a signal beam and a control beam. So this is where um, plasmonic circuits or optical circuits comes in. And in this particular application, we, we're using essentially linear effects. So we're using interference between two light beams to cause the modulation. So plasmonics is something that you'll hear a lot about, I think, during um, this morning's talks. Um, when Long mentioned briefly plasmonics. Essentially, a plasmon is an electric charge oscillation. So metals have conduction electrons in them. If you shine light onto, those, onto the surface of a metal nanoparticle, it can excite those conduction electrons, which then will resonate on the particle. So that's essentially what a surface plasmon is. It's just a charge resonance. So um, if we put a configuration of metal particles together, such here, you can see there's three there in a sort of a um, half loop arrangement, that forms a little electrical circuit. The idea is that if you shine light onto this, so here we have light beam coming in with polarisation parallel to those two rods, that will excite the surface plasmon, so it'll excite, excite the electric charge oscillations in them. These electric charge oscillations then re-radiate light, and if you look at the, the image just below it, if this structure was sitting on a substrate and you were looking side onto the substrate, you'd see there's two rods and they would re-radiate light and it, it just comes out as a spherical wave and so it's not particularly interesting. Um, but we have this third rod across the top which is called a bridge and the idea is that if, if you put another wave on that which we'll call a control wave, polarised parallel to that, it'll excite the surface plasmon in that cross, cross rod but not in the other two because the orientation's wrong. But the surface plasmon is actually electric charge oscillation, so it produces very strong electric fields, and that will excite electric charge oscillations in the, the other two rods. Anyone with a radio background, you can think of these as little dipole antennas. So they're coupling light into it. So those two rods will also oscillate, but you can see by the direction of the arrows that they're now oscillating out of phase, 180 degrees out of phase. So if you look at the diagram below, you can see the waves coming off are actually interfering. In, along that little black dashed line you see there's destructive interference, the waves actually cancel out there. But if you move at an angle to the left you can see that there's con constructive interference, so we're getting quite a strong wave that way, and also to the right. But there's a phase shift between them. So it's sort of quite a complicated situation we have here where there's all sorts of 
interesting phase shifts going on. But the net effect is if you shine two light waves on here, so essentially you're overlapping those two, those two waves, you can see that you're going to get different sort of interference of the waves travelling in different directions. And that interference between these waves leads to all optical modulation. And I'll just say that um, if you look on the right, with that destructive interference, that means that you don't see any light coming through from the control wave, which is actually a very interesting property. So just for the all optical modulation, the idea is we, we make an array of these structures, and that array, it's, it's the spacing between these is much smaller than the wavelength of light, so from the point of view of light it looks like a uniform material, but it actually has a structure that consists of those rods, and that's what the metamaterial is. We make a whole array of those so it looks like an artificial material. We shine two light waves, a signal wave and a control wave, with a well-defined phase difference and we use that to modulate the signal wave. So here's what the metamaterial looks like. It's not a very big piece. Uh, this was manufactured in a, at the Melbourne Centre for Nanofabrication. I'll show you the manufacturing process. But from the point of view, this is 100 microns square of all these little structures, um, from the point of view of light looking at an optical microscope, it looks just like a thin film. But then it has these unusual properties which are designed in by these little plasmonic circuits. So the nanofabrication, as I mentioned, it was down and down at the MCN. This just really gives an idea of the, the fabrication process. So it's relatively straightforward. You start off with a substrate, you put a metal film. In this case, we use a very thin layer of gold, 30 nanometers thick. Put some electron beam resist, so this is a, uh, essentially like a photopolymer or electron sensitive polymer. We expose it with electron beam lithography system, which then creates the patterns, and after development, we have the resist in certain regions. We then put it through an iron beam etch, which etches away the exposed gold, but where the resist is sitting, it leaves the gold unaffected, and then we remove the resist, and we end up with the structures on the surface. So what does it look like? Well this is the, the example um, showing some modulation. If you look at the diagram on the far left, you can see that the top one and the bottom one are essentially just single rods, parallel rods, so that becomes our control just to see that um, we're not getting some strange effect. And then the central patch is the metamaterial. And as we change the, the phase, the numbers here, C on S is the ratio of the control amplitude to the signal amplitude, so we can change the relative strength of the control beam to the signal beam, and also its phase. As we change those, you can see that there's a very clear modulation, and this is just taken with a, um, a camera attached to a microscope. So it's a very obvious effect. But the really interesting thing is if we, put, if we take the um, signal beam away, um, we don't see any control beam. I must say that there is a polarizer on the output of this that filters out the control beam that isn't intersecting the, um, the metamaterial. So for 100% modulation, so we're modulating the signal beam by 100%, only about 8% of the control beam is mixed with the signal beam. So that's sort of like a, a crosstalk. So that's very interesting. That's not, not normally what you would get with um, interfering beams and modulation. Here's some data just to show that we actually did some science behind this and, and, and um, modeled this uh, quantitatively. I won't go into the details of this other than these essentially just the spectra of the light coming through. So you shine white light onto this metamaterial and you measure its optical spectrum. So you've got wavelength on the scale. And you can see that the, the amplitude, if we sh switch between 0 and 180 degrees of the control beam, we're getting a change in the amplitude. And uh, on the, um, for the right, if we switch between minus 90 degrees and plus 90, de 90 degrees, we not only get a, a shift in the amplitude, but we're also getting a, a change in the optical spectrum, and that's really interesting. That's very unusual for a linear material that you can actually fiddle the optical spectrum with another light beam. Um, you can convert those into the effective modulation, which is the difference between, uh, for example, the light intensity with 180 degrees control with the light intensity with zero degrees divided by the light intensity without the control, so it's effectively a fractional modulation. And we're getting modulations of around 100%. And just to show that, in fact, we've got some theory that describes it and that tends to fit very well. So that was all optical modulation. Uh, the other thing that we, we realised with these artificial materials is that we could also make an all optical switch. Um, in other words, we could change, the, we could direct a light beam into two different directions under the control of another light beam. And effectively we do this by removing some of the, the optical circuits. So you can see there's an image up here where we've removed some of them. And this creates a diffraction grating where the actual rulings of the grating are our little optical circuits. So when you shine light through a diffraction grating, 
it's, you get a direct through beam, which is the transmitted beam, and you also get diffracted beams, a plus and minus one diffracted order. And each of these is affected differently by the phase of the control beam. So this just shows an image of these, of the, just the, the plus and minus diffracted orders. And if we um, get the control beam amplitude right, when it has 180 degrees phase, the plus one diffracted order is on and the minus one diffracted order is off. And then we just flip the phase, sorry, when we just change the phase, we can, we can turn one on and the other one off. So essentially we're, we're, we're controlling the intensity of the two diffracted orders by another light beam. Obviously we've got to control the, the relative phase of that. So just in conclusion, um, I've introduced the concept of nanoscale optical circuits based on surface plasmon resonance and we've applied this and nanofabrication techniques to develop an artificial optical material which modulates beams, and that's the metamaterial. And we've demonstrated experimentally all optical modulation and switching. We've got a provisional patent on the, the whole modulation concept, and we are interested in commercialization, although I suspect at this stage we're not quite at, that, at um, uh, the application stage. So I just want to acknowledge uh, Fatima Eftakari, who used to work with me at CSRO, who's now an employee at the Melbourne Centre for Nanofabrication. Daniel Gomez, who you'll hear from later. CSRO funding through various um, mechanisms, also the Melbourne Centre for Nanofabrication and the Australian National Fabrication Facility. Thank you.